What's going on guys? Welcome back to yet another one of Huggy's Beer Reviews and the fourth in my series of these British beers. Uh, fourth in the series because I started with Boddington's. This will be the third series uh, from the Moreland of the beers from the Moreland Brewery. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous ones, let me show you how this started. I had the Boddington's because it was requested and I was going to review it and then I found this variety four pack called the Hen House. Uh, with the four different beers from the Moreland Brewery, the people who brew Old Speckled Hen. Uh, we started with the Old Golden Hen because it was similar to the Boddington's. I kind of did that as a back-to-back. -back. Then we just did the Old Crafty Hen. Now we're going to do this guy, Hen's Tooth. Let me read what it says about Hen's Tooth right here. Hen's Tooth, a fine, specially brewed English ale which matures in the bottle producing a richer and more distinctive character. A warming blend of fruit and malt flavors are followed by a smooth finish. Uh, Hen's Tooth is 6.5% alcohol by volume. And you know what, it, this is one of those beers that before I even got into like craft beer and like the really good imported stuff, I heard about this beer. Just I, I came across it somewhere and it stuck in my head because a beer named Hen's Tooth. Obviously I didn't realize that it was because Old Speckled Hen and the tradition of the brewery and the names, you know, starting with Old Speckled Hen. Um, and I'll, you know, obviously a play on the whole hen thing, but uh, now I'm finally getting to try it. On the label it says, bottle conditioned English ale, a fine specially brewed English ale which finishes fermenting in the bottle. In the words of our head brewer, a combination of flavor and character that's as rare as a hen's tooth. There you go, that's the reason for the name. From More Than Brewing, Westgate Street, Bury St. Edwards, Suffolk, England. There you go. For maximum reward, carefully pour into your glass, leaving the yeast sediment in the bottle. A well rewarded moment of care. So it says on the back. All right, and I'll show you guys. Here's a close up. Hen's tooth. Here we go. Now, like I said, you know, I've had Old Speckled Hen many times in the past. I really like that beer, especially on tap in the nitro. Uh, so we're leaving it for last. I actually won't be doing it today. I'm going to pick up a can, the nitro can, and do a comparison. Not only will I review it, but I'll do a comparison of the bottled version and the nitro can version. So this will be the last one for a minute. You guys will see them all back to back to back to back anyway. But before we pop open the hen's tooth and have our last old speckled hennish beer of the day, let's uh, see what they're talking about. They say about the beer. Jumping over to uh, Beer Advocate, and once again, and I say this every time just to let people know, I use Rate Beer and Beer Advocate as general guides and you know uh, basic information. I don't really read the reviews. I take everything with a grain of salt. But on Beer Advocate, Hens Tooth from the Green King Moreland Brewery, out of 266 ratings, scores a 78. They categorize it as an English strong ale at 6.5% alcohol by volume. Uh, take a look really quick there. And then jumping over to Rate Beer. Out of 536 ratings, it scores a 52. Categorized as an English strong ale. Uh, once again, 6.5 ABV. Commercial description, it says, bottle conditioned, Pipkin Pale Malt, Crystal Malt, and Maltose Syrup. Challenger and Golding Hops, Moreland's Original Yeast. Hmm, so they have their own in-house yeast. That's always cool. Take a look at that. Yeah. All right, so that's what the interwebs are saying. So here we go. Hen's Tooth. And uh, much like the old Golden Hen, plain golden cap. A little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Break out the spider coat tenacious. Pop off the cap. And of course, once again, rinsed out and clean the proper British pint glass. Once again, we need to be careful on the pour here. We want to leave the sediment in the bottle as recommended by the brewer. 
usually uh, unfiltered beers with sediment bottle conditioned beers like a lot of uh, Belgian wheat beers and such or even certain IPAs even that are unfiltered you uh, want to leave the sediment to the bottom swirl it and then pour it in since the brewer recommended I do not do this I will not do this I'll pour a little bit in there and I'll just leave that little bit of backwash sediment swell there kind of makes it look a little more interesting all right so the head did kind of fizz away quickly on this one not a very thick frothy foamy lasting head color wise I would call this kind of a ruby burnt amber dark dark you know yeah not ruby that's really the closest I can come to this uh, it's almost a reddish tinge Again, the head has kind of fizzed away to a film. Um, I would say it's filtered or unfiltered, but we left the sediment in the bottle, so you can see through it. And, uh, hmm. The smell's reminiscent of the old crafty hen. Kind of a, a, a malty sweetness with slight uh, fruit notes hint of almost kind of an apple thing and then like dark fruits um, kind of a raisiny plum kind of thing typical of kind of British strong ales the ones that are really low on hops and high on malt but still appealing so let's just dig in all right thanks for staying tuned through all these British reviews um, you know, it runs long and, and I get more buzz as things uh, progress, but you're still with me and I love you guys. Cheers. Amazingly, there's still bitterness to this beer. Even with a diminished head and the fact that the smell is predominantly malt, my first sip gave me carbonation fizz, you know, the bite from the carbonation and bitterness from, from the hops. So it was really enjoyable and almost refreshing on that first sip. Another super smooth beer. I think that that is kind of the cornerstone of the beers from the Moreland Brewery. They're all smooth. Well, okay, uh, except Old Goldman Hammock. It was really rough. But all the other ones, all the darker ones, have this really, really smooth body. Very enjoyable, very easy to just put down. It goes down so smooth. You almost get like a carbonation fizz and bite almost through the whole beer. The hot bite, it, the hot character is there, kind of grassy, kind of tame, kind of mellow, but just enough bitterness to, to ride on top of the malt and give you that bitter flavor and that bitter feel. Grassy hint of pine, very mild, traditional, typical, you know, Euro, British hop note, but it's definitely there. Um, and just kind of smooth across the board. The bottle conditioning does kind of give it, and I don't want to say effervescence, but it gives it a little more fizz. Fizz is the wrong word. But it does kind of give it more of an effervescent, fizzy character to it, you know, across the whole, the whole experience of, you know, of beginning to end on the swallow and on the taste. It's really hard to describe, but it's there, and that's that bottle conditioning. For those who don't know, bottle conditioning is adding a little more yeast into the bottle before they close it up, so that yeast continues to ferment while the beer is already bottled and packaged and ready to go. So it does change the character uh, of the beer over time and it gives it definitely more character and more of that fizz and fermentation and effervescence than you would get in a beer that's finished, processed, and then bottled. I hope that was a fair explanation of, of that for people who don't understand the concept. Um, but regardless, I feel like I'm rambling on here. What is my time on this one? Okay. It's time to go. This is good. For those who enjoy these beers that are bottle conditioned and have all these different elements and characters to them, you're gonna like this. It's not hoppy. 
but there is enough bitterness in there to kind of carry, carry across and make people who like bitterness happy. That makes sense. Um, the mock flavor is complex. The flavors in general are complex. Uh, and the bottle conditioning really does, it, it, it's noticeable. For those who know what to look for and know what that is, it is noticeable and it adds another dimension to this beer. This is very enjoyable to drink. Rich body, a lot of character, a lot of dimension. It's a quality brew. Don't let the initial nose on this beer fool you. It's, yeah, it's good. Um, I won't call it exceptional. And this isn't exactly the, the style of beer, the, the type of beer that I, I really enjoy drinking. So I won't call this a glass full. I will call this a very strong glass half full. For what it is, it's very good. And the complexity is impressive. No off-putting flavors, very well put together. A winner from the people at, uh, at the Moreland Brewery in England. And that's it, I'm done for the day. I will be back though. You guys will see me back very soon with the old speckled hen back to back, side by side, comparison, bottle versus nitro can. And that'll be the last of my series on these British beers. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Remember, it's Hoggy's Beer on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, and Hoggy'sBeer.com. Stay tuned for the last one, guys. Cheers.